What do you want in here, Donati? This came for you, Mr. Curtis. That must be the new polo helmet the missus was going to buy me. You know, Donati, I'm going to have to stop eating, or I'll be too fat to get on a horse. Mr. Curtis, if you please. Oh, will you please give me the check that you owe me for the... Can't you see I'm busy? You're always hounding me for money. I'm getting sick and tired of it. All right, all right. All right. Niccolo Donati, day laborer, was found guilty of murder in the first degree for killing his employer, Al Curis, and sentenced to die in the gas chamber at 7 a.m. on November 24th. The case, which caused hardly a ripple, escaped everyone's notice, including my own. But on the morning of November 23rd, the day before the execution, Warden Rogers phoned me from the prison. I understand, Warden. I'm glad you called. What makes you so sure he isn't guilty? I'm not sure, Herb, but I just came from Donati's cell, and we may be executing an innocent man. I know the feeling. I've had hunches like that myself. The execution's that soon? All right, I'll be there this afternoon. I'm not too familiar with the case, Niccolo. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you dozens of questions that you've been asked before. Mr. Maris, I will be glad to answer anything, anything. You were working for Mr. Curis. Yes, sir. Yes, I was digging in the garden. I was building sidewalks. Uh, I, I was uh, I was working all around, working men for him. Did you live in this place? <laughs> no. no, Mr. Maris. There was no room. I, I have five children. Wonderful children. Monsieur. Tina. That's my family. You see that little girl there on the right? She, her name is Maria. <laughs> and uh, yesterday, it was her, her fifth birthday. <sighs> Mr. Maris, Mr. Maris, I would love to see them once more before I go. But not here, not here. I understand. Niccolo, would you tell me what happened the day of the murder? Well, sir, uh, I, was, I was fixing the gate when the young man comes with the big package. And so I take the package and bring it to Mr. Curtis. Was he wearing a uniform? No. No, I don't think so. Do you remember anything about the car? Car? No, he had no car. He had a bicycle. And uh, at the end of the bicycle, he fastened this uh, package. Niccolo, had you ever accepted deliveries from Mr. Curis before? No, but the, the, the young man was in a hurry, you understand? And he left the package by the gate, and it was a big package. I don't want to leave it outside. But big packages had been delivered before. Yes. Why did you take this one? Because to tell you the truth, I, I wanted an excuse to go to see Mr. Curis. You know why? You know, pay me for the cement, you know, pay me for the pump in the well, you know, pay me for the bricks, you know, pay me for anything. Why not? Didn't you like the work? Well, you like the work, sure, say the best, masterpiece. Only, I'm a little short this week. I'll come back next week. And come back next week. And come back next week. He's a rich man and I got six mouths to feed him, Mr. Maris. Now I tell you, how can he, anybody be so stingy? How? This made you very angry. Sure. And they used it against me in the court because I, I lost my temper and I, I tell him that I, 
I kill him or, or I hurt him. But what could I do? The men don't answer me. He no answer. I, I beg him. Nothing. Now, now, what would you do? What would you do? I lost my temper. But Mr. Marius, I did not kill the man. I swear to you. I believe you, Nicola. I'll do everything I can. I just hope we're not too late. Mr. Morris, if tomorrow they take me to die, it's still not too late. It's never too late to prove a man innocent. <laughs> in the middle of the case, Lieutenant, but this is very urgent. Well, I don't mind the interruption, but i got to be honest with you, Herb. I know it's unusual for Warden Rogers to do this kind of thing, but I'm still against it. All this is going to do is get us a lot of bad publicity and make people think that we're executing the wrong man. But what if we do? Herb, I went all through the Donati file again after I talked to you, and nothing has changed. The wrapping paper was found in the waste paper basket. The package was addressed to Curris with the bomb in it and Donati delivered. Now, you can't change the facts. No, but you can reevaluate them. Herb, this is the first time that Donati ever delivered anything in the line of mail to Al Curris. He explains that. I know that story. Al Curris owed him some money. It's possible, isn't it? Of course it is. It's also possible there was a boy on the bicycle. Herb, do you know how many boys ride bicycles in this city? Well, when that story hit the streets, we got over 200 calls. And we checked out all of them. Oh, thank you. And that's just the little detail that put Donati on the spot. Exactly. Nobody in their right mind would have told a story like that unless it was the truth. Herb, uh, don't you think it's odd that he was the only one at the scene of the crime? When Karras pulled the string that exploded the bomb, none of the other servants were there, none of the kitchen help. It could have been coincidental. Then how do you get around the attempted assault and murder threat just three days before the explosion? I don't, but he has five kids to feed. The Boston Black Mass killer had nine kids. All right. But don't forget that Al Curis was a bootleg and gambling czar of the 20s. This could have been a gang killing. They like to use bombs. He's been out of the racket for 20 years, Herb. Huh? Doesn't it seem funny that any of his old enemies who wanted to get rid of him would have gotten rid of him long before now? Besides, that bomb was a homemade job with the kind of dynamite Donati had right there on the ground. I still think the case deserves looking into. Well, the Supreme Court has denied his appeal for a final stay of execution. Now, what do you expect to accomplish before morning, except send up a lot of dust? I don't mind kicking up a lot of dust. Not when there's a man's life at stake, and neither do you, John. Okay. Okay, Herb, if you need any help, call me. Lieutenant Weston, please. John, this is Herb. I need some information fast. I know it's after 5 o'clock, but you know this can't wait until another day. Where'd you get those names? We practically turned the place upside down trying to trace down your goat. I had three men from my own department working downstairs in the basement going through the dead vial. Well, the taxpayers finally got a good day's work out of you. What'd you come up with? Now, well, let's see. Blue Fly Mulligan was killed in a bank robbery in Scranton in 1926. Little Johnny the Wharf Rat is now in an old people's home in California. Blackjack Billy settled down and became a drummer in a big-name band and died about ten years ago on the road. Swamp Root Sam and Sheeta Malote were the only two people in the neighborhood near the time when Curris was murdered. Two suspects, and you say only? Relax, sir. There's more. Cedar is in a hospital in the penitentiary. Now, that leaves Swamp Root Sam, who is now Brother Sam Eleanor. You can find him most any time, day and night, down at the Main Street Mission. Now, I hate to say this, but I told you so. Uh, good luck. You're going to need him.
Good evening. Greetings, brother. Oh. It's easy to see you're not a member of our unfashionable community. But your face does look very familiar. Oh, I know. You must be one of our gracious benefactors, a contributor. Ah, uh, but time takes its toll. My memory's fading. I can't recall your name. Perhaps it's because we've never met. Are you Brother Ellender? Indeed I am. My name is Maris, Herbert Maris. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. I've seen you in the newspapers many times. There isn't anyone down here on Skid Row who doesn't know who you are. Well, brother, allow me to offer you a hot, steaming bowl of Swamp Root Sam's famous onion soup. But I'm afraid I don't have the time. Brother, you have nothing but time. Don't be driven by the infernal ticking machine. What you need is a good bowl of hot soup. I'm sure it's very good. Very good, he says. Brother, our sponsors, some of whom are worth untold millions, leave their palatial homes and drive their limousines way down here just to get a taste of Sam's superb pottage. And let me tell you something else, brother. This soup is not for sale. You've got to get it free. Brother Ellender, I came here for help. What kind of help? Who got Al Curis? Don't you read the papers? Nick Donati is going to fry for it tomorrow. You know better than that. I'm sure you're a righteous man, but do me a great favor. Find yourself another patsy. The has got less than 12 hours to live. I can't help you. He's got a wife and five kids. What am I supposed to do about that? You don't know what you're asking. I think I do. Look, the mobsters left me alone all these years down here to do the Lord's work because they know that Sam can keep his big mouth shut. You can trust me. It'll get back. I'm no squealer. I won't do it. All right, Sam. It's up to you. But I'd hate to try and stand up in front of my congregation, knowing that I'd let an innocent man die. You don't understand that. Wait! You're right. Donati didn't do it. The story I get from the hoods who come by here is that Al was leading a double life. Trying to take over the rackets, that's why he was rubbed out. Who did it? Nobody's willing to put the finger on any one guy, but I can tell you where you can find out. Where? Wanderers. All-night gambling place on the outskirts of town. It's a hangout for gangland. Since Johnny Gibson, one of the big men, took it over. You won't be sorry you did this, Sam. Oh, one thing more. When you get in the club, look up a girl named Honey Evans. She's working there as a camera girl. I did her a favor here and there when she was down and out. Tell us Swamp Root Sam sent you. He'll steal you right. All right, Sam. One print each. Don't be that way. I've got work to do. Wait a minute. I'll wait more than a minute, Preston. I'll wait all night. But after 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, if you let it happen, I don't even know you. Look at the birdie. All right, but uh, come a little closer. I want to talk to you. Sam Allen just sent me. I think it'll be better from the other side. I owe a lot to Sam. He's the only guy I ever met who was willing to give without taking. Anything I can do for you, I will. I'm looking for Al Curis's killer. That's something I don't know. I didn't get your name, mister. Herb Maris. Ellen, you said you'd level with me. Look just a little this way, please. Niccolo Donati's going to die at seven. Tell me something I don't know. What are you trying to hide? 
Look, this thing is driving me out of my mind. I don't know what to do. I can't turn in the guy I love. What's his name? Preston Forbes. He runs the photo concession. How's he mixed up in this? He's got something on Carissa's killer. Then Donati didn't do it. No. Who did? Well, I don't know for sure, but I think it's one of those two in the back room. Johnny Gibson or, or his right-hand man, Carl Kincaid. That Kincaid. Just to make sure, I better take another exposure, sir. Your boyfriend must have dropped some hints. I think it's some kind of blackmail, Mr. Maris, but I really don't know. What is the photograph? I don't know, Mr. Maris. I honestly don't. Excuse me. Here are the prints for the party of two. Who is that guy? Customer. Sure took a long time to take his picture. So what? Yeah. Uh, you ask any questions? Yeah. He asked me if I'd go out with him. trying to save this time, Mr. Maris. You know as well as I do, Nick Donati. Got a gun on you. You come in with me and don't make any noise, or I'll drop you right here. This guy was bothering a camera girl. I don't think I was. And also questioning Forbes. We were having a chat. What about? It was a private chat. And I don't appreciate being brought here at gunpoint. We are calling a play. What are you after, Maris? A killer. What makes you think you'll find him here? No comment. This is a private club. I could find half a dozen reasons for shooting you legally. Trespassing, illegal entry, you name it. I told a few friends of mine on the police force where I was going. I don't care who you've told. Be nice to yourself. Don't come back or they'll find your feet sticking out of an ash can. Now get out. Try and keep me. What time is it? Twelve. Seven hours till the naughty solos. There was a message waiting for me at my apartment. Forbes wanted to meet me on a remote country road at 3.30 after the club closed. It meant a two and a half hour delay and time was the one thing I didn't have. Forbes. Forbes, can you talk? I think I'd make it. I'd better get you to the hospital. Can you move over? No. I'm... I'm not gonna last. Fine, honey. She knows. What happened? I tried to get $25,000. Blackmail. They ransacked my apartment. I lied to them. Told them I left a negative with a friend. To, to be mailed to the police if anything... Happened to honey. Where is the negative? I hadn't realized there were so many clocks in the world. Lieutenant Weston, police headquarters. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, just a minute, please. We're trying to get in touch with Miss Honey Evans, and we haven't been able to reach her on the phone. Switch off, shuts down at midnight. Call whoever you want to in the morning. Didn't you hear me? I said it was from police headquarters. I heard you. Must have the wrong address. Everything's peaceful here. I didn't call any police. If uh, you want to solve that, try moving night to King's Night 8.
I am your right. Oh, daylight already, eh? Look, we have to find Miss Honey Evans. It's literally a matter of life and death. Oh, why didn't you say so? She's left. Left when? Mm, couldn't say exactly. It couldn't have been more than an hour ago. She left in kind of a hurry, too. Do you have any idea where she went? Not exactly. But at this hour, there would be only one place. Let's go. Can't see a thing. We're too late. If she came here at all. Let's try the back. saw before in my life. Can you remember what he looked like, Sam? A uh, tall man, a dark suit. Uh, can't help you much. You didn't get a good look at him. What did he want? He wanted honey. I heard through the grapevine. The Forbes had gotten his. I figured she'd be next. Send word for her to get over here quick. She dead, but this hood was following her. When I wouldn't let him have her, he started to work me over. Where'd they go? I didn't see him leave. I blacked out. I bet he took her to the Wanderer. Sam, don't move. I'll call an ambulance. Where is it? I told you I don't know. I will let Kincaid handle you, honey. Now, come on. I got just so much patience. Johnny, you've got to believe me. I told you I don't know. Oh, God, please. Johnny, please, you've got to believe me. I just don't know. Your boyfriend said you did. He didn't. He couldn't have. Where is it, honey? You keep asking me the same thing over and over again. I told you, Johnny, I don't know. All right, I'll quit asking. <laughs> Why should I tell you? You let an innocent man die, and you're going to kill me anyway. No, please. All right. All right, it's over there in the file. What are you talking about? I'm telling you the truth, it's there. Under J.L. Masters, Golden Anniversary. There it is. Put it down. I love your timing. And against the wall. Well, why are we here? Looks to me like a couple of newlyweds cutting a wedding cake. The important part is in the background. Preston was making some enlargements for this young couple about three or four months ago when he spotted Gibson in the background there holding that package. It tied in with the description of the package Curus got from Donati. And the address made interesting reading. What address? Look at the second picture. It's a blow-up. It's Curus' address, all right. And it fits Donati's description exactly. That's the bomb package. No mistake. We've got just 14 minutes. Get on the phone, fast. Oh, well, District Attorney Lawrence? Did you get through to the governor, sir? Thank God. 